The router can be considered one of the most important devices that you have in your home. It connects with many other devices and ultimately the internet, so it's a prime target for cyber criminals to try and exploit. Unfortunately, many routers will come with insecure configurations and exploits that can easily be found online. So in this video, I'll take you through 13 easy ways to improve the security on your router and your home network as a whole. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, welcome to the channel. My name's Chris and I run homenetworkgeek.com, a site where we cover everything home networking. So let's jump straight in with my first tip. When you receive your router from your ISP, it will come pre-configured with the username and password. Now most people won't think twice about this and will keep the username and password as they are, but it is quite worrying how well known these can be. It is therefore good practice to change both the username and password that you use to log into your router. Once you have logged into the router for the first time using the default username and password, you should easily find a menu that allows you to change both. Remember to set the password in particular to something that's secure using a mixture of letters, numbers and special characters. Another default setting pre-configured by the manufacturer of the router is the SSID, which is also known as the network name. And this is the name that shows up when you go scanning for available network connections. Usually the SSID will reference the manufacturer of the router or the ISP in the name. So for example, Virgin Media routers will often start with VM. The big drawback to keeping the SSID as it is is that it often identifies the type of router that you're using. Anyone could then research exploits for that specific type of router and potentially find a way of accessing it. Changing the name of your SSID will avoid this problem, but just remember to not use anything that identifies you personally. Not all routers will have it, but most will have a feature known as WPS or Wi-Fi Protected Setup. This is a feature that makes it easier to connect wireless devices to your network. It involves simply pressing a button labeled WPS on the router and it allows devices to connect without the need for a password. Now it is unlikely that anyone will have physical access to your router, but turning off the WPS feature will remove the risk completely. This can be done within your router settings. Most routers will have a built-in firewall that can be turned off and on. A firewall is essentially a filter that's designed to block unauthorized network access, while still letting safe network traffic through. Once again within your router's settings, make sure it's enabled. Now the firewall may not be 100% perfect, but it's definitely a lot safer to have it turned on than off. It's also one of the main reasons you should always be using a router and not just relying on a modem, even if you only have the one device that needs access to the internet. Most home networks will be broadcasting their SSIDs. This is convenient in the sense that you can quickly scan for an available connection and ultimately get connected, but stopping the broadcast is an easy way of improving your home network security. Again, this is achieved within your router settings. Now this does greatly improve security as when people go searching for connections, they won't be seeing your SSID. But one thing to remember is that you're not exempt from this. Your devices won't be able to detect it either. So as a result, you'll have to manually type in the network name every time you want to connect a device. This is one of those cases where you need to balance up convenience and security and determine which is more important to you. In addition to having a predefined username and password to log into the router, the network as a whole will also come with a default password. This is the password that you'd use to connect devices to your network and is usually a random string of letters and numbers. Now these passwords generally are secure as they use random characters, but it still doesn't hurt to change it. Now you've probably already guessed where you can change the password. Yep, you got it right, within the router settings. Older routers may still be using WPA, which is now very dated and considerably more susceptible to hacking compared with the more recent security standards. If you have the option on your existing router, make sure that you are using WPA2. This is a much more recent standard and considerably more secure than just WPA. Check within your router settings to see if you have the option to turn it on. If you don't, I'd strongly suggest getting a new router that does support this standard. As is the case with lots of other devices, routers will receive updates to provide new features, fix bugs, and improve security as a whole. It's therefore recommended that you keep your router fully up to date so it doesn't become vulnerable through out-of-date firmware. Now most routers will update themselves automatically, but it doesn't hurt to log in every now and then just to see if there's an update available. Using a different DNS server not only can improve the load time of web pages, but it can also improve your security as well. Switching away from your ISP's DNS service and using something like Pi-hole, Cloudflare, or OpenDNS 
can prevent those annoying redirects and pop-ups. It can be considered a good option as well for parents who want to further protect their children when they're browsing online. You could configure the kids' devices to use a different DNS service like OpenDNS where parental controls are enabled, whilst keeping all of your devices on a separate DNS service where you don't have any restrictions. Every device has a unique MAC address, which is essentially an identifier for that device. Within your router settings, you may have an option that allows you to only allow access to devices that have an approved MAC address. Rather than know the MAC address of each device that you want to connect, instead, you can have a look at a list of currently connected devices and use that to allow or deny them as appropriate. You can, of course, find the MAC address of each individual device and add this manually if you prefer, but it could take some time. If you have a pretty regular schedule throughout the week and don't have any need to connect to your home network remotely, you might want to make use of the scheduling feature and have your Wi-Fi only become enabled at certain times of the day. For a lot of people, this won't be very practical, including me, especially if you have lots of smart devices around your home that require constant access to the internet. But for those of you that don't, why keep your Wi-Fi turned on and accessible when you don't really need it? This does ultimately provide one less way for people to potentially access your home network. Chances are you don't want to be configuring your router when you're not actively connected to your home network at home. If your router has some advanced features like remote administration or remote management, I'd recommend these are turned off. If you need to make any changes, you can do so when you're at home and connected securely. If I'm honest, I can't really think of a time where you'd want to make changes to your router or home network when you're not at home anyway. If your router has the option to broadcast a guest network, definitely take advantage of it. As you probably already guessed from the name, it allows visitors to connect to a different Wi-Fi network without exposing them to the rest of your home network. This could include your smart devices, network printers, and shared files and folders. Now, it is unlikely that any of your friends and family that visit have bad intentions and want to try and hack your network, but letting them connect to your primary network could result in them changing something by mistake or even seeing something you'd rather they didn't. Not only that, but it also adds an extra hurdle to anyone that's trying to access your home network without permission. Even if they do somehow manage to get access to your guest network, it's reassuring that they won't have access to the router and be able to change anything there. If you do decide to use a guest network, I'd suggest combining it with tip number five and stop broadcasting your SSID. This way, anyone visiting will only have visibility of the guest network, keeping the primary network reserved for those that know the correct network name. So that was 13 tips on how you can improve your home network security. I really hope you found them helpful. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to visit homenetworkgeek.com where I have a ton of articles that cover everything home networking. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.